Hi everybody, it's Jen Ferguson and oh, give me just a second. Um, I am going to try to send out a new message to everybody in our group. Uh, everybody, okay. <laughs> um, so give me just a second as I type because we are now doing where I'm going live first and then I'm sending out our direct link to the video so that everybody can get this and um, come join us, okay? So I'm just typing for a second and I'll be right back, okay? I can't type and talk at the same time, it just doesn't work. <laughs> Oops. Let's not make any mistakes over here. Um, let's go get the link. You know, there's just a few things to always do, okay? We should try to be organized a little bit better and have all this ready to go. I know, I know. So I gotta go find our video anyway and uh, make sure I'm live in the right group. Oh, and click on it so that I can see. Oh my gosh, there's a bunch of you already on here with me. This is awesome. Okay, so let's get big here so I can see everything that's going on. Let me grab the link and go share it with everybody else on the right page. Um, let's see. Okay, let's see if that works. Okay, for those of you that are in my texting community, you should be getting a text here in seconds, hopefully. <laughs> Oh, so that's awesome. Our texting community keeps growing and growing and growing. And that is so awesome. It's a great way for us to keep in contact with you guys. Um, I know if you're like me, you always have your cell phone around so that you can always see a quick text and just a nice little reminder. Um, and uh, we use it for a lot of things. We remind you about um, our alerts. We have some private little cells and coupons that's only available to the texting community. Um, and then we have, we have you guys in different groups as well. So that like my painting group, my private painting group, that's Jim's painting group has its own little group. So if I need to text just the members of that group, I can. Our foil club has a separate little group. So we got all kinds of little groups within our texting community. Uh, so before I get going tonight, and I promise you, we're doing some cute little flower pots tonight. Okay. So we're going to have a flower pot night here. Um, Raylan. Okay, so behind me, you guys can see this gorgeous finish that's sitting here. There's a canvas, there's a sign, there's a little table, and we're also going to cover wall application, but the Raylan workshop is open, and I think I have it in the comments, okay? Um, let's see here. I'll double check and make sure that, I know, I got, I think I got a million I have way too many, okay, here we go, way too many tabs open on my computer, okay, I could get lost on my computer easily because I've got a ton of tabs, um, but I'm going to put a comment here about uh, the Raylan workshop. This workshop is coming up on June 24th, 25th, and 26th. Um, it's $15 to join, and you're going to have three days of my undivided attention in this room. Okay, we're not going to be in the room the whole day, you guys, but um, we're going to have live video training. If you can't make the live, don't worry about it. The pre or the recorded version, the replay will be there. You can come back and watch it anytime. Even if you do come and watch the live, realize you can go back and watch all the videos later. Um, but we're going to do live training. We're going to do, a, the training is going to be done on a Canvas um, application so I can take you through all the layers and the steps. Um, and then also in this room, we're going to be sharing the videos from all the process Oops, behind me. Okay, I got to figure out which way I got to go. So there'll be a video on the table, the sign and the canvas, but we'll also go over if anybody, oh, and the wall. Okay, so I also did a wall application at my house. So that was absolutely amazing. Um, so don't miss out on this, you guys. The workshop starts at like, I don't know, 
11 or nine days, nine days from now. Um, and like I said, you'll have access to me. You'll have a lot of access to me to ask questions on the application. We're going over a lot of stuff. Um, you can either click on the link that I just put in the comments, or you can type in um, the word Raylan or workshop and a link will be sent to you guys through Messenger, okay? So that's that's the way we use Messenger a lot is just to send you guys a few links here and there. Uh, but we wanted to, I was so excited on creating this workshop to get a chance for people to really get introduced to me as a teacher, okay? So when I'm out here on Facebook, I'm showing you guys a lot of things. I, I, I am teaching, but I teach at a different level when it gets to my painting group, okay? So this is a way for you to spend just a few bucks. Um, you learn an absolutely fabulous finish. Um, this finish can be applied to really any surface, and that is what I'm so excited about with this workshop is that I'm showing you how to do a canvas, a wall, a piece of furniture, and a craft, okay? Letting you know that when I say my stuff can be applied to anything, I don't care how challenging or how many layers I create in a finish or however I do something, I think almost everything I can do can be applied to anything. I could take this finish to a flower pot if I wanted to. That would probably challenge me, but I could probably make it work, okay? Or I could take parts of it or enough of it to another surface. Sometimes you might not be able to take every application, but you can take enough of it where you can put it on just about anything you do. So I hope you guys join me. We've got a few days to get signed up, but don't wait because we've got a supply list. We've got a kit available if you want to order the kit and have all the supplies. It's not necessary. You can just join the workshop. You can come hang out in there. Uh, everybody's starting to introduce themselves so we can all get to know each other better in this group. Um, and that's one thing about my private group. I'm uh, really strong about community and getting to know each other better on a deeper level because it's a private group. So we've got that ability to do that. Um, so hopefully you guys will chime in and come and join me. We had like 150 people, I think, on our last workshop. So we're hoping to at least get 150 more back in this one. So if you have questions, please super feel free that you can just um, type in the comments and let me know. And I'm telling you, Facebook is really super weird today. I don't know if everybody else has been glitchy, but um, I'm not seeing comments like I normally do. It keeps telling me I can hide them, but I'm not seeing them today. I keep having to refresh my screen and here, I even refreshed my screen and just kicked me off my page completely. Oh, okay. We have to love Facebook for all it does for us, but it does get glitchy sometimes. Okay, I might have to go back over to StreamYard and read comments because I see them here, okay? Um, okay, great, Gigi. You got your notification. Hello, Judy. Okay, this is, looks like where all the comments are, okay? Um, hello, hello. Gosh, I haven't seen some of you guys in a while. It's so great to see all these names. Hello. We've got some new people on here, too. Yes, Desiree. Desiree is in. Okay, we've, we've got a few people that are into the workshop. They've already ordered their kits. I want to say I think everybody that's joined has ordered their kit already. Um, oh, Mary Jo, you... You can watch whichever platform you are most comfortable on, okay? If you are watching on um, YouTube, I probably can't see your comments right now, but I can see them through StreamYard. StreamYard is definitely letting me see that. Um, yeah, watching live is fun because I feel like when you watch live, you get to, um, you just get to participate. And your comments get read as long as Facebook shows them to you. Okay, I this happened earlier today. Um, I was training in my Facebook group, um, my private group. We had um, we had over an hour plus on everything you ever wanted to know about foils and more. Okay, um, and I think I've always I think I teach everything you can teach, but I really feel there's so much more we can do with foils. So I did an intense training today inside my private group all on foils <laughs> and even during that one I could not see the comments half the time okay so hopefully I fixed this okay there's 25 comments there and I couldn't <coughs> could not see any of them at first I was accusing my 
my group of being super quiet earlier today because I'm like, nobody's saying anything. You guys have got to talk to me. And the only way you can talk to me is on your keyboard. <clears throat> okay, so <clears throat> let's see if <clears throat> I can quit choking here for a second. Um, TJ, uh, I don't know if we have the list available until you join, but um, so we're using metallic paints, metallic plaster. Um, we're using a roller. Um, uh, I'm just, I'm, I'm kind of looking because there's kits out there that are ready to ship, okay? Uh, so we've got a primer. We got metallic paints, metallic plaster, a roller, and a stencil. So if you joined TJ and you have all those supplies, and even if they're not what I'm teaching with, you definitely can create something on your own. If it was a different roller, a different stencil, a different metallic uh, texture, uh, a different metallic paint, I think you would be able to still use everything you have. Um, so in the group, when you join, you're automatically, I think on the thank you letter, there, there's a supply list or there's a supply list inside the, group, the private group for Raylan. And then you also have the option to go and check out the kits and you can check out all the kits. We, I gave way too many options again on the kits, but I always feel like on the kits, um, some of you might have all the tools, some of you might have all the product and I just, I made a whole bunch of kits, okay? So there's lots and lots of options. But um, TJ, if you got any questions on that, just keep typing me. I'll answer whatever I can. Um, yeah, I was going to say, there's a lot of people that have got their kits ordered and ready to go. Woohoo! That's awesome. So again, if you guys want a direct link, just type in the word workshop right now into the comments and a direct link to sign up will be sent to you. I say most of you guys are probably on our email list. And I think it I think an email went out today. I know a text alert went out today and an email went out yesterday. I don't know. That's I don't I don't do the back end stuff like that. We have team meetings. Everybody gets a little job on um, like what they have to handle. I'm the one that just needs to come out here and talk about it and have fun. Okay, so if you have questions on Raylan, just ask for now. We're gonna turn my camera down and we're gonna look at my table and we're gonna play. Um so I've got some beautiful foils out here that I think I'm going to work with tonight. So we've got our wild leopard spots, large and small and silver. I've got koi cheetah. i got Bailey's flowers. And I've got um, cheetah silver, okay? I'm going to set those aside for now. And um, I found these adorable little flower pots, okay? And they had a huge, huge display, okay? This is from Dollar Tree. And I've already done a adorable little video with these okay so if you want to see what i've already done with these go check out my youtube channel we've got a great little video you uh youtube video we have a blog post we have a whole thing on them but i wanted to just come on here and take you guys through the whole process because i'm getting ready to do a larger one okay so when i opened that there was a lot of little chips that came off so I'm trying to think okay there is one that kind of cracked there so you got to be careful with these um, they're fragile okay but a chip out of a flower pot's not going to make me not want to go forward okay we're just gonna have to sweep back here making a mess okay and the first thing I do is just wipe them off these don't seem to be like as dusty as like a regular terracotta pot you can see there's just a little bit of color coming off so I'm just wiping them clean. I'm going to go right forward, okay? I'm not even going to wet them down. If you feel like they have such a dust on them that you do want to, then get a damp cloth and wipe them down with a damp cloth. But if you do use a damp cloth, you guys, let those sit and completely dry before you go forward. Um, anytime I get terracotta wet, you got to make sure that that terracotta has having plenty of time to dry because terracotta is going to absorb your moisture, which it's meant to do, okay? That's what terracotta is all about. It absorbs your moisture and um, it's gonna need some time to dry out. So don't just let it dry for five or 10 minutes, let it thoroughly dry because otherwise you're gonna start painting on here and you're gonna trap moisture, which is not good with terracotta. 
um, and painting, okay? That's what causes some problems. So my process with these is I've used Bondego. Bondego is my paint and primer all in one. And I'm just using black because that is like my favorite choice for my base coat color. Like 90% of the time, sorry. <laughs> Um, we talked about this earlier in my group that if you are really looking to try to create the most flawless looking application, then pick a color that is going to coordinate with your foil. Okay, don't just pick black, don't just guess, pick a color. But with almost all the foils, okay, let me move things over here slightly so I don't push something over, but with almost all the colors, that I have chosen here, okay? Every last one of these has black in it except for my silver in the middle. So Koi Cheetah has no black in it. Black might not be the best option under Koi Cheetah, but black will not take away from it. Black would actually just make it kind of look like it was slightly distressed, but it's not going to make it look awful, okay? So you would be okay with black underneath that, but you have black in this pattern. You have black in here, black, black. So all the other four, black would be a great base coat, okay? If I was choosing um, this gold color, okay? So like our satin gold, I probably, if I wanted something to look more flawless, I wouldn't pick black to go under here. I would find a paint color that is similar to that foil. Okay, but we are working on a black base or we're going to be working on a black base. Okay, so when I do my terracotta pots, if there's any imperfections, which this one really does have imperfections, you can grab, grab some sandpaper and normally sand those off, okay? Where that one had the chip, I could try to maybe smooth out that little chip a little bit more so it's not so rough, okay? So it kind of depends on what you're planning on using these for and how perfect you want them to be. Um, if you're okay with slight imperfections, then do not feel like you've got to do a lot of prep. Um, and I feel like I'm not saying comments again. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Um, so let's move back over. Okay. I gotta, I'm gonna have to keep refreshing my page. There just must be a glitch today with, um, comments that they're just not coming through and every time I refresh my page I lose my page okay so if I'm not answering you guys that means I can't see all of them um, weird okay they they must be doing something again there is just a lot of stuff going on with Facebook right now <laughs> uh, okay no that's not letting me okay here let's see if I can push on that one Okay, come on, comments. Yeah, they're just coming up so slow. Desiree, thank you so much for the stars. That's so kind of you. Um, yes, I'm going to pin. I'm pinning the Raylan Workshop link to the top of the thread. Um, and let's see. So TJ says, I don't have a roller though, so maybe it would be easier to order the kit. You definitely could order the kit. The small kit has everything, so it's going to give you a small jar of everything plus the stencil, the roller. Or if you have a lot of the supplies, TJ, you can just go and grab whatever tool you're missing, okay? Um, so we tried to make it where it was very easy for everybody to pick up just what all you needed. Okay, I'm going to go back to my flower pot here. Okay, so I'm using, oops, I don't too far. I got a brand new jar of Bondego. I'm so excited. I finally had to just like scrape out the other one. Okay, I just had barely anything left. Okay, so when I paint my terracotta pots, I have just found that it's just easier to go ahead and do like the base section first and get this part done. And I'm just trying to paint my Bondego on here nice and smooth and get full complete coverage. And I will normally let this terracotta pot sit until the whole base is 
uh, dry, okay? And when I'm doing the base, I do the bottom, okay? Make sure I have 100% coverage. And do the whole base of the pot. And I bring it up over this, this edge a little bit, okay? Onto what I call the rim. And if I'm technical here, okay? Um, and let it dry, okay? Just let it sit and dry. And you're gonna find that um, you are definitely going to have more to hold on to, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and do this one the other way. There's a couple of ways I'll do the inside and um, I'm still not seeing comments, you guys, okay? So, um, so, okay, so if I'm not answering you guys, I'm so, so sorry. Um, because we're definitely having issues today with uh, Facebook and then let me see comments and I just don't understand. Um, maybe let me go back to a different view here and see if I just don't, um, if I don't go to that view now. Wow. So, hey friends, I'm just not seeing everything. Okay, I'm gonna try really hard um, on just trying to keep here. Okay, so I'm seeing one right now. It says, are you painting the whole inside of the terracotta pot? Because I know you mentioned something about if you don't put the foils, my put your foils, my bubbles on the outside. Okay, so Mary Jo, there's a couple things you can do. Um, if you're planning on uh, planting in here, I don't care what you do. You can paint the whole inside if you want, or if you're just going to use these to plant in, okay? What I normally will do is I normally get a better looking brush than this one, but I'll bring that color down to like where I'd say is about equal to the width of the outside rim. But I normally will find a better looking brush where I can probably get a straighter line and a nicer looking line. And I'm going to try to bring it in, around the whole inside and just kind of cut a straight line if possible. Okay, it doesn't have to be perfect, but definitely pull this line down deep enough that if you were planting in here, you wouldn't see the terracotta. You would just see some of the black um, on the inside edge. Okay. And then, let's see, let's don't dip too far there. Then you can paint out the rest of the rim area, okay? And this is what I would do. Now, this is what I did with my little tiny flower pots that um, I said I already had a video for. So if you hit the YouTube channel, not right now, but later, or if you're on YouTube, there is another video to go watch after this one. <laughs> Um, that's about as far as I would go, okay? Now, if I'm going to use this as a container, meaning I'm not going to plant um, something that's supposed to stay alive in here, ha, 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 um, <laughs> then I will probably um, go ahead and paint all the way inside, okay? So this one here is probably still, you know, not perfectly dry, but let's say I'm going to use this as a container, that I'm not going to plant anything in here. I'm going to use this at my desk and I'm going to put pens in here or I'm going to put uh, paper clips in here or something. I'm just going to use it as a container, okay? I'm not planning on planting in here. When I don't plant in them, then I normally will take the uh, paint and do 100% coverage. But Mary Jo, really to answer your question, um, I wanted to cover painting, okay, on where I was going to paint, depending on what I did. But no matter where I paint and what I'm going to use this for, when I'm done, we're going to put 100% coverage on the entire surface. So whether I've only painted down a little bit, or if I paint it on the entire inside, no matter what I'm going to use it for, and no matter where I paint it, I'm going to put a hundred percent top coat over everything inside and out. 
the terracotta will not be allowed to breathe ever again. Okay, so we're taking the terracotta property away from the project. Uh, so you have to realize that um, plants do live okay in uh, ceramic pots. Okay, it's, it's not going to possibly give you the same great breathing ability that um, terracotta would, but you are definitely going to um, be able to use these for multiple things and you'll just make sure that you're not going to, um, you're not going to hurt the paint, okay? So what's going to happen is if you do not um, take the time to, okay, and again, I'm sorry, you guys, we're, we're just not, we're just not keeping our, our comments coming through because I think I can see 40 of 49. <laughs> oh, this is fun. Um, you just have to make sure that you have completely sealed it when you're done, okay? And the reason why is if you allow any water to soak into the paint or any water to soak into the terracotta, it's going to push everything off from this side, okay? It's just going to soak in and push out. So you have to seal the pots 100% no matter what you do. So just be prepared that that's what you're going to have to do. Okay, so once your pro project, oh, let's see, I was a little generous here. So let's put some of this away. Um, and we're going to go on to our next layer, okay? So our next layer with doing these is going to be our foil adhesive, okay? Our wonderful favorite thing, our sticky, sticky goodness um, that we can just put on everything. And, um, Oh my gosh. Okay, you guys, I'm sorry. I'm just going to have to possibly read comments later. <laughs> I'm not sure it's keeping me up to date on those, but I promise you, I always tell you guys, I look at comments later and I always do answer. So tonight's going to be a firm believer that we're going to have to definitely be answering, all, I think, things a little bit later. Um, I'm trying to keep up with you and hopefully, hopefully I will. Uh Oh, awesome. Madonna says she's got some signs she's working on and she can't wait to foil them. And oh my gosh, you guys have done some incredible projects. Uh, foil club peeps, okay? Foil club peeps. Everybody should have their foils in hand. Um, almost everybody probably should have gotten their package by now because those all went out over a week ago. So they've had some time to travel. We're so excited. And... Um, Okay, so I've got a couple of things prepped here. Okay, so this is one of the pots that I had done earlier. So it's dry and it's been dry for a while. And um, I always, again, like to kind of isolate where I'm putting the foil adhesive. So if I foil adhesive the entire pot, then that'd be hard to um, pick two different foils if I wanted to do two different foils on here, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and only put the foil adhesive on the bottom half. And my brush had a little bit of water in it, so it's kind of thinned it down a little bit. But normally I always say when you're brushing onto a nice smooth surface, um, add just a tiny bit of water, maybe like 1%, 2%. Okay, you're not adding a lot, so don't get super generous with your water. You're not trying to make it runny and lose your adhesion, okay? But you'll find that it'll brush on a little bit smoother um, if you have a tiny bit of water that you add to it. So if your brush wasn't pre-wet, okay, and I did try to get all the water out of my brush, but it was just damp. Um, you can always uh, just spray. You can use your mist bottle, your water mist bottle. And just spray a little bit onto your plate just like that okay and then use your brush and mix it in okay so once you have a hundred percent coverage sometimes we'll just kind of come back and try to make sure that I don't have any obnoxious brush strokes and just try to smooth everything out 
and then I'm going to let this sit and dry. Okay, we want to make sure our foil adhesive has plenty of time to dry. Um, and because, let's see, I'm just making sure there's nothing else I'm going to hit that I might do something here shortly, but this is a great example of what the foil adhesive looks like wet, okay, has that white hazy look and what it looks like clear. So clear, it just looks pretty shiny. You can see the difference between the Bondego without the foil adhesive on it and how it looks with the foil adhesive. So it definitely looks shiny when it's dry. And it should be super, super sticky. Okay, this has been on here for at least an hour. So I was trying to make sure I had plenty of dry time. So now what I can do is I can foil the whole bottom half of my little terracotta pot, okay? And I don't have to worry about it getting on the rim because I didn't put foil adhesive there. So we're going to do, um, I did a set in the wild leopard spots and the gold, so I thought it'd be fun to do a set with the wild leopard spots and the silver. And I'm just going to cut a piece that I'm sure is probably bigger than I need. And we're going to go ahead and just foil this. Now we're on a terra on a tapered shape, okay, so this is going to like wrap around, I'm going to go up here, I think, wrap around um, without it being like perfectly straight, okay, so we're going to kind of like bring it up together, and it's never going to go on perfectly smooth, I just want you guys to know, I tried to bring my, my seam together where I was seaming it both sides instead of like letting it fall all the way straight and having a perfect line in it. Seaming it like this, we kind of able to bring them together. Um, kind of gives you a little bit less of a distinctive line, I would say. Uh, let's see here. I'm just going to read a comment. I'm seeing a comment. Um, Judy says she used the four by four squares of the foil on ceramic tiles and can't get it to cover 100%, even though I'm covering the entire surface with foil adhesive. Not sure what I'm doing wrong. Okay, well, Judy, it could be uh, a whole lot of, uh, this could be a lot of different options. So give me some more information. I'm going to ask you um, what type of ceramic tiles you're using. What was your preparation on those tiles? Did you sand them? Did you base coat them? Um, how long did you allow your base coat to dry? How long have you allowed your foil adhesive to dry? Um, and all those details, okay? So details, details, details. Okay, so I'm going to flip this over so that I can even maybe get the bottom of it done, okay? And I'm just kind of squishing it over. Uh, and we're just going to scrub. We are just going to scrub. So there's, I always try to tell everybody that foils aren't perfect. Foils have their flaws, they have their limitations, but we're pretty much able to get them almost to stick to everything. But we do need prep, we do need dry time, and um, base coat, okay? You, it's always best to have a base coat. Don't try to like adhere directly to ceramic tiles without a base coat. Um, so there could be a bunch of things. So. Judy, do me a favor and type out some details and we'll try to address all of that, okay? So I'm just using one of my scrub brushes. I'm trying to make sure that we're all the way down in this little curved area as well. So I'm getting out my little toothbrush again. I'm telling you, your toothbrush is wonderful for your small projects. And we are just going to make sure that we're scrubbed well everywhere. Scrub, 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 dub, dub, dub. I think we need to have a little fun way of saying how we scrub, okay? Um, now, I'm already peeling back, and I can tell that I don't have great coverage here. I've lost a little bit of the design. So I'm going to put my foil back. I'm going to scrub a little harder. I might even get out my toothbrush, okay? I'm going to pull back. Okay, that looks better. I'm going to put this section back and do the same thing. So I try to always tell you to peek before you peel everything. So as you're peeling it back, if you feel like you've missed an area that you didn't scrub really well in one section, 
you've got the ability to put the foil right back. And if there's anything still on the carrier, it's going to be in those spots. So peek, release it a little bit, lay it back down, and scrub some more. I'm going to do that all the way around here, okay? And I'm holding it kind of in position because I knew I was at the end. So I don't want that to move. Guys, that is so cute. I've got the bottom of it done. Okay. So now all I have to do is grab our foil adhesive, but I am going to get a better brush, okay, because now I want to try to keep my foil adhesive off the bottom section, so I'm going to find a smaller brush, um, a little bit smaller brush so I can control. I got an angled brush. Sometimes it's nice to have an angled brush, and that way I can keep the, um, keep the foil adhesive right where I want it. So I put a little bit of water on there earlier, remember? So now I'm just trying to make sure it's mixed in. I'm trying to offload some of that excess because I picked up so much. And I'm going to go ahead and try to make sure that I have my foil adhesive going down and matching, okay? Matching that line that I've already have foiled. So I want them to come together. I want them to match up, but this is going to allow me to be able to do that and have a nice, perfect line. Or, as well, I shouldn't say perfect. I should have a nice line, okay? And again, I picked a, a newer brush, okay? So there's a reason why I have old brushes and new brushes. One should always be adding to their collection every year, every couple months. Normally, I'll go ahead and grab some clean new brushes. Because we beat them up, okay? No matter how well we try to take good care of them, we do kind of beat them up sometimes with our process. We just loaded our store with a bunch of new brushes. I think we've got all of our art brushes back up on the website, but we even bought some other brushes, so we've got to get those up on the website. Just not enough hours sometimes to get all those details done. Okay, so I got the whole outside done. And now I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing. I'm only going to take my foil adhesive down to where the black is because that's where I paint it. So that's the only place that I need to foil to. I don't have to foil the whole inside because if I'm going to plant in here, you're never going to see that. So that I'm not going to waste my time going all the way in there. The other little one with I painted all the way in, I'm planning on making it a container versus planting anything in it because planting for me is just not a good thing. My, my thumb's not that green, okay? Um, so the foil adhesive now is on there and is ready or will be ready, okay? It needs to dry <laughs> for at least an hour, okay? But that will be ready um, in about an hour to finish up. And then what I planned on doing was using the other uh, leopard print with it. Okay, so these are both the wild leopard spots in silver, but I used the small on the bottom and I'm going to use the large one on the rim. Or you can mix up and do something completely different and you could put a floral with it. You could put anything you want it with it. But I think it's cute to use multiple different foils together instead of foiling all the same. Okay, so we're going to get out my Baker project that I really got going here. Okay, so this is the saucer. And it has full coverage of my Bondego, top and bottom, but I only have foil adhesive on the bottom. So I was planning on doing this one in um, the Bailey's Flowers. And the Bailey's Flowers, I want, what I normally will do when I have saucers, uh, okay, I don't want to bring that over, is I'm just going to use this as an example. But when I'm using a saucer with a terracotta pot, I normally will coordinate the rim and the saucer, the same print, and then do the base of the flower pot in something completely different, okay? So that it's kind of like has the floral here, I'll have the floral there, and I'm going to put another um, foil in 
the the other section of the flower pot okay so let's get rid of that piece because it's got a sticker on it and let's grab ourselves a piece of the baileys and the baileys is so so pretty okay so we're going to just lay that over okay just lay it over your surface and you can use any of your brushes okay so now that i'm getting into a bigger area i'm just like okay let's get out the big guns okay let's we'll get out our big um our big scrub brush okay so it's not going all the way down into this little area that's recessed because it grabbed the high area first so what i would do is pull back because i got black all down in there that it has not transferred and then i can toothbrush go did i lose oh here it is um now that i can get down into that little area i can use my toothbrush to do that i can peek from this side as well and make sure that we have coverage all down in there and then i can start to wrap it around my sides now you can see it's not going to wrap perfect okay so if you're looking for things to be i hate to use the word perfect okay but Let's say you really want to have this where it doesn't wrinkle as much. You could come in here and you could cut the foil in a few different places. Um, and I've never really worried about this, but I know some people just like things to come out uh, where they don't have as probably many as wrinkles and crinkles. Okay. I have kind of come accustomed to wrinkles and crinkles the older I get. But if I do that, you can get sections to lay down probably a little bit smoother, okay? They're going to cover over, overlap a little bit here and there, but they're not going to be as wrinkled, okay, and crinkled together. So you're going to have a little bit better or smoother, but we're also working on something that's tapered, curved, and getting larger, okay? So we've got all kinds of crazy things happening for us. Um, and this is one of the things I really want to point out. When you're going on a surface that has multiple levels to it, like a terracotta pot, realize that uh, your foil transfer is going to be a little bit more challenging. You're not going to have a perfectly smooth surface to work on. You're not going to have uh, everything just flat okay it's going to take a little bit more work you're going to have a little bit more of a challenge okay but this is going to this allowed the foil to lay a little bit more smooth with this on getting this curved edge okay so basically it's only going to catch to where i put the foil adhesive okay so if I don't have foil adhesive all the way to the edge, which I didn't put it because I knew I was going to flip it over and I cut because you don't want it sticking to your surface. Um, so it's only going to stick where I have the foil adhesive. And it might be best just to go ahead and kind of critique as I go um, and just see if by chance there's some place that's not adhering really well as I'm going around. I can just lay the, um, the foil right back and critique each section as I go. Um, but it looks like we're getting really good coverage other when, than when it's getting to the top and there's no adhesive there, okay? So we can just kind of work around and um, do this. But you guys will find if you're looking for a gorgeous floral pattern bailey's is phenomenal okay absolutely stunning and i want to say that these foils transfer so nice we really do get a uh, great release um, if we do everything the way we're supposed to <laughs> uh, so i'm going to continue and Judy, don't think I forgot about you. I'm just going to try to stay focused on this project right now. And then I'll come back and see what you responded and see if I can give you any advice and what possibly went wrong. Um, there's a lot of things that can happen. And uh, we, we go for a lot of different surfaces to try things on. Um, almost 100% of the tile trivets I've done have all been travertine tiles.
which mean they're porous. And my foil adhesive sticks beautifully to the travertine tile. I don't even have to base coat it if I don't want to. Um, you've gone on to a ceramic tile, so I got a feeling that's part of the issue. It could be uh, just an adhesion issue because it's uh, ceramic. Uh, but we'll get to that. Okay, so your terracotta pot, once you have your foil transferred, okay, all the way around, and you think you've got 100% coverage or you've got as much coverage as you can possibly get, then go ahead and remove it. Now that was a pretty good idea, you guys, and helped with laying that down so that our pattern came out really nice around that edge, okay? So that is really super good coverage. Oh my gosh. I know there's a glare because we're always into the metallics, but that is so, so pretty. Um, so what you would want to do at this point is flip this, okay? And I love using some of my leftover foil for it because it's going to protect that side and it's not going to get scratched while I'm trying to finish this up. And I would go ahead and do 100% of my uh, foil adhesive on this side, which I'm going to go ahead and do so that we can continue to prep and keep this project going. Um, let's get back into our bigger brush. Okay, let's make sure we got a paper towel here handy. So in between when I'm doing different um, applications, you guys, I don't know if you can see this, but I'm always putting my brushes into what's called a water tub so they're not just sitting out um, and getting dry. Okay, so there's always a water tub over there. And let's pick up some more adhesive. And that should possibly be enough. Okay, so let's just get enough out here. If I need more, I can always add more. Don't you think that's gorgeous, Desiree? It's such a beautiful um, foil. And I can, <laughs> I've got a few of the, a few pots done in this, okay? But it's okay. We can have a few more done. Okay, I want to make sure that that's not going to grab anything. So at this point, again, get your foil adhesive out, put it on your sticky plate. Add a tiny bit of water. Okay, that was maybe like 1%. I barely squirted that on there. And go ahead and do full coverage everywhere that you need the foil adhesive. Okay, so if you're planning on doing 100% coverage on the inside and full, um, the full, or the, the tray, okay. The saucer, that's the name of it. Gosh dang, I couldn't think of that. Okay, so here I try to stay close to that, okay, um, that I'm not doing too much where I'm going over it, but I'll definitely have a little bit where it's probably going to overlap slightly on this edge because I foiled, I foiled up so far, okay. So there's going to be a little bit of an overlap there. It's going to be hard just to just go right up to it. You could have been probably more precise and only put the foil adhesive to that, that little crease and then you would have had a line to come back, but I wasn't that neat with it, okay? I think I was a little sloppier when I was doing that because I did not shoot. I wasn't sure which foil I was going to use at that point. Okay, so here I just want to make sure I'm going back, smooth things out, okay? Don't leave a mess inside here because you could possibly see those ugly brush strokes. So try to smooth out as best you can. Again, it's going to look that milky white until it completely dries. And let it go set. Just go let it set. Okay. And I've got my big flower pot here. <laughs> we got the big one going. So this big one here is what I planned on um, planning on using, okay, I'm planning on using, and I know, I'm just stuck on my animal prints, but I thought the cheetah would go really well with this. I know, that just kind of spoke to me. My other thought was maybe doing the koi cheetah and silver, because there's enough silver tones in the Bailey's flowers, or I was going to go and be a little bit more bold, okay, 
and do the cheetah. So koi cheetah or cheetah? Okay, I'm gonna let you guys vote on this one. Let's see if we can see any comments. Okay, well, I'm gonna give you guys a second to vote and do me a favor, vote in, okay? And get your keyboards going, you guys. Give me your opinions. Um, remember, this is gonna be with Bailey's, okay? So Bailey's is either gonna be with the silver cheetah, silver regular cheetah, okay? Or koi cheetah in silver which is all monochromatic, okay? And there's a lot of silver tones. So this will be a very conservative where this is definitely gonna be a little bit more on the loud side. Um, so either put cheetah, silver, or koi cheetah. And give me your opinions, okay? I'm gonna give you guys a second to do that and I'm gonna go read a comment, okay? Um, Okay, so Judy says, I'm covering the entire surface with the foil, but not sure what I'm doing wrong. I'm not getting 100% coverage. Okay. Okay, so Judy, you're never going to get 100% coverage with the foils. So if you're on a white ceramic tile, that's why you are seeing so much of probably the background, and it looks like they're just not covering well. Um, so it would be best if you went ahead and painted those tiles a color that is going to coordinate with the foil. So if you, you know, we we put such a variety in those little um, sample packs that, you know, pick a, pick a color that works with three or four of them, but I'll guarantee you it's going to look so much better. Um, and it was like, um, I don't know, I've, I've always tried to explain that if I put the foil over a piece of wood with no base coat, or if I put it over anything white or light without any base coat, you're always going to see through the foils. You're always going to see some imperfections. It's just the base coat color, if it's picked correctly, hides those imperfections. That's all we're always looking for is just hiding them, okay? Um, they're always there, okay? It looks like Koi Cheetah is a winning, okay? Uh, we're in for the conservative tonight. Yes. <laughs> this is actually going to coordinate really well with the other one I did. Um, so I want to say you probably didn't do anything wrong, Judy. It's just the fact of you probably put some strong colors maybe on top of a um, white ceramic tile. And it doesn't look good. I'll guarantee you it doesn't look good because it's just not an attractive um, combination. So that's most likely the problem. And you're just, you're noticing that they're not covering 100%, but they never do cover 100%. Um, and it's just because you can see it. Now, you're going to see here when I'm doing Koi Cheetah over black that we're definitely going to see some of the black coming through and it's okay I don't mind black coming through silver I think it's an okay combination I need to get new scissors or clean these <laughs> um, I'm probably doing an overkill here but I'm going to cut an extra piece just in case again I'm going to try and try to show you uh, a great way to um, work on the tapered surface, okay? Because we have tapered. Tapered is not always fun. Tapered just means we got to work a little bit harder to get it to work, okay? So I already started to here adhere, so I'm just going to let it adhere. And we're only going to go so far both directions, okay? And let's just get that covered. Now, I ended up with crinkles, which I told you I would, okay? <laughs> And let's go ahead and just scrub it on. And I'll guarantee you, we're going to see some black. And we're going to see black under all those wrinkles. Everywhere it's kind of just wrinkled and crinkled on there, we're going to see black. But I picked it on purpose. I knew I'd be okay with that. 
So I'm going to pull back and I'm going to critique. Okay. I'm going to take a look at this. I'm going to bring it up a little closer. You can see down in the rim area where it curved, it didn't have anything. Places where there was a big crinkle in the foil, there's a big black line. So how do we do that, guys? Okay. Um, yeah, you could cut smaller sections. I don't know if I would cut much smaller of a section. Again, um, for this, you're never going to end up uh, perfect, okay? <laughs> it's just not going to happen. Um, you're always going to have some wrinkles and some crinkles. And I just try to, like, remind everybody that the foils aren't perfect. But Mary Jo, if you wanted this to look as perfect as possible, then put a gray underneath, okay? Don't put black underneath. Because if you put gray underneath, you're going to hide, okay? You're just going to hide those imperfections. They're there still. You're just not going to see them as much, okay? So like right here, I got a big snaky line, okay? And that's because the foil crinkled there. But if I open it back up, lay it flat, it filled it in. And I don't have that black line. So I can go back and just critique as I pull it back and lay it back down areas that I can go ahead and scrub again and try to get full coverage, okay? And I just do that section by section. But like I said, it really, everybody has their own personal preference, okay? If you want this project to look simply as flawless as you can, do me a favor, put silver or gray underneath the spoil. Don't put black, okay? It's just not going to happen. And let's do this last little section here, okay? Now, I'm going to go ahead and just continue to go around the pot. I'm not going to try to fix anything else yet, okay? And there still are, okay, isn't that pretty there, you guys? You can see that koi cheetah pattern. It's so subtle. It's just so tone on tone. And there definitely is areas that the black is still showing. But I'm going to fix those last, okay? I'm going to go ahead and finish out by grabbing another piece of foil. I want to make sure that I'm overlapping here on this side. And going as far as I can. So now I knew I probably needed three pieces. And Mary Jo, if I maybe had cut these a little bit smaller, I might have been able to do it with just two pieces. But I must say, you've got about three pieces pretty much probably for this project. Okay, so again, go ahead and let's just Grab it on as usual, go as far as we can, and we'll definitely come over to this side and piece in our last piece. Let's start peeling back and seeing where we might have missed any spots that we can rub out. This is strange doing it from this angle, guys. I'm doing my best to make sure you can see. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and so Nora's even making a great little comment here that says she doesn't mind the little black lines. It makes it look like there's a little crinkled effect. Um, I don't mind the black lines either. I think it kind of gives some character. And um, it just, you know, it's personal. It's so, so personal on what everybody likes. And that's why I always tell everybody, just because I'm painting black underneath does not mean that is your best option. That was just my best choice, okay? That was what I wanted to see. But I think the black just makes it look slightly distressed. And I do like a distressed finish, so I'm good with that. Okay, let's go ahead and just pull that piece off as well. And I'm just going to make it easy on my life. And I'm gonna grab a brand new piece and just fill in the last section here. And just make them come together or bring them together and once we have that done okay that popped off so quickly okay i'm going to do the bottom as well while i have this piece up here 
and finish out the bottom of the pot. And because it had that high area that it grabbed, I got to get down into this little curved area all the way around. And that's, I tell you, you guys, you always need a toothbrush, okay? <laughs> Go to the Dollar Tree, and the Dollar Tree has stiff, okay? They got firm toothbrushes. It's the best place I can find them. And they're a dollar, so buy a few of them. And I've even trimmed them shorter so they would even be stiffer, okay? And just critique as you pull it away. Make sure that you, because it's also terracotta, sometimes there's imperfections in the terracotta where you just might have to scrub again to get it down into that little nook or cranny. Okay, so now I can kind of put this on the side and be okay with it. And if I do have an area where the foil just didn't transfer right there, I can just take the pattern and I can rub over it, okay? And I can decide if I want to go back and try to do a little backfill. So I can go back to those areas where the black's peeking out and just rub over them, okay? And it's personal. You don't have to do this. You can let your black show. You can pick a different base coat so that you have uh, the look and appearance of a flawless finish. It's not going to be flawless, but you will have more of that appearance, okay? Here, going back and just doing a little bit of random um, brushing over, I'm just going to be filling back any place where there's still a little bit of adhesive that's sticky, okay? That's gonna pull the metalization off of the carrier and kind of fill those areas. Um, and it's, it's, it's doing a great job, okay? And no, I'm not trying to match up the koi pattern, okay? I'm just using whatever piece of the foil. I'm just putting it over there. So we're going to have to come back and finish up our pots tomorrow because I isolated areas, which means I have to put the foil adhesive on the rim on this one. We put it on the other side of the saucer. And we'll have to let that dry so that we can finish it out. But um, pretty much a quick and easy project, you guys. This could be an afternoon project with your girlfriends. Um, I'm getting some stuff done, okay? I'm noticing I haven't critiqued this edge as well, okay? So I'm just going to get back in here and scrub on that edge a little bit more. And then I can... Oops, let's go all the way around. Take your time. When you're doing something like this, don't be in a hurry. Make sure that you have the coverage you want before you move forward. Okay, so now, again, I would grab one of my better brushes, okay? Not one of my older brushes that's kind of ratty looking. <laughs> so we'll grab the smaller brush that is newer because we want to create that nice line. Um, Jana saying, do you need to add a primer to the acrylic paint or just use acrylic paint? Um, I've always primed my terracotta. I don't know why, but I always have. Um, if, you're, if your acrylic says it adheres to terracotta, then go for it. You don't have to prime. That is a personal thing, but I guess I... I started doing flower pots, I don't know, 20 something years ago when I was doing these. And I always felt that I was better off priming first because I wanted a great base and adhesion uh, going on. So I primed them with gesso back in the day. Okay, I used to always use like an artist gesso. And then I would put my acrylics over the top of that. So I would look at your acrylic paints and determine if they're meant for terracotta and if you're going to have really good adhesion. Now I'm going to think you probably do because terracotta is porous. Okay, I try to go as far as I can and uh, still be able to leave this on the ground, okay, before I have to hold it in my hand. It's easier to have it on something s uh, s 
steady before you have to go and do that edge. Um, but yeah, I think I'm just a believer and I've just been doing it for so many years, Jana. I'm not sure it's always necessary, okay? Um, but make sure your acrylic says it will adhere to that. Sometimes I just get onto the internet and I Google things. And I would Google like, does acrylic paint stick to, er to terracotta or should I prime first? I mean, you're probably going to get a lot of answers. I probably just opened a bottle of worms for you, but um, I'm going to say I'm going to prime, okay? But my Bondego is a paint and primer all in one, so I'm doing that all in one swoop, okay? Okay, we don't want that sticking. Um, I'm not doing a paint or a primer and doing a paint, but back in the day when I did these, you know, 15, 20 years ago, I was doing gesso because I wanted that adhesion and then I had such a wealth of color combinations with using acrylic paints that I put my acrylics down and then did whatever I was doing over the top. Okay, so here I still, oh, here's a decision, okay, here is a total decision. I've painted the entire inside of this and I planned on using it more for a container so I might foil the entire inside of this. Hmm. Um, Teresa, it doesn't matter which side you pull from. If you're pulling the foils off and peeking underneath, you just want to pull one side, lift and look, put it back. You can pull the other side, lift and look, and put it back. So um, I don't think that really matters. I, hopefully that's the question I'm answering. Um... Oh, Diana's out saying she's not getting anything in chat either. Diana, if you can hear me, uh, I'm having a ton of problem with Facebook today, and I couldn't see half the messages as well. I'm actually over on um, StreamYard looking at the comments because I'm not seeing them on Facebook. They've kind of like come in and go, okay, so it's not just you, Facebook is, is glitchy today with the comments, okay, so obviously they're working in the background again and doing something and we have no idea, it'll probably work better tomorrow, but it's always great to be on a live and have something not work on a live, um, but I bet you you can go back and read them later, okay, and get through all of them, so it's not just you, <laughs> so yeah, Diana, um, uh, did you pull for right to left? Uh, no, I meant to see comments. Uh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> that's okay, Lorraine. Being tardy, you're here. We don't care. Okay, so guys, I'm going to remind y'all, okay, about Raylan Workshop coming up this month. If you have not signed up, girls and boys, get on over there. You don't want to miss this workshop. It's going to be phenomenal. It is a three-day workshop where I'm going to be in there live, training on every layer. If you can't make the live video, don't worry. You can always watch replay, and you will always have access to the videos. Um, you're going to have the live training is going to be showing the finish on a canvas, a smaller canvas than that's behind me. Okay, that was a large canvas project. <laughs> um, but in the group, you will also have access to all of the videos that I did ahead of time for all of the projects. So Raylan's going to cover showing you how to use the finish on a wall application, um, furniture, uh, the sign and a super large canvas, okay? Uh, so if you haven't signed up and you want to find out about it, you guys, just type in the word workshop into the comments and you will um, you will get a link through Messenger so you can go check it out. It's 15 bucks. It's an opportunity to hang out with me for three days in an environment that's like my painting group. Uh, so it's, this is very similar to what I do and how I do things in my private painting group. And if you're not a member yet, you definitely want to be. Um, so Rima is saying Facebook has not been showing comments since Thursday. Oh my gosh. Okay. We didn't have any problem over the weekend. So it's got to be a rollout thing. Um, 
Oh, if you're using a touch screen, you can see them from right to left. Okay. Now I've, I've got a, a MacBook out. Okay. Ooh, holy moly. Okay. I don't have my charger back here, you guys. And it says I got 3% left on my MacBook, which means I'm going to lose this video if I don't stop here soon. So um, I'm just going to let you guys know that type in the word workshop. A link will be sent to you so you can find out more about Raylan. You guys don't want to miss this. We've got super incredible um, workshop coming for you for three days. And um, we'll be back tomorrow night. And we're going to finish up our terracotta pots, um, our big ones and our small ones. Okay. So you guys have an absolute blast. But I'm going to sign off before my MacBook dies. Okay, guys. Uh, it was great hanging out with you. I will make sure I get back to you on all your questions later tonight. And have a blessed one. Bye, guys.